All right, well, we're complete. Uh, I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, I've got it all completely wired up. I'm going to need to do a little cleanup. I've got a decent amount of solder flux left over that I'll be going over and cleaning up with a little bit of denatured alcohol and trying to clean up a lot of the dust that's left over, but this is a completed circuit now. It works. Power's on, and I have uh, no real side effects. Uh, at this point, uh, the problems that I'd mentioned before were related to having the wrong kinds of power hooked up. The uh, heaters here, and then come around back down to here before going to 200 ohm resistors and ground, were um, miswired with a higher voltage, and I think I damaged something related to one of my power tubes, because once I got all the other issues of miswiring sorted out, it was still being weird. I was suggested by a forum member to remove a couple of the power tubes and just use two of them at a time to see how that worked out. Doing so gave me good output. I also biased them way colder so that um, they were basically not outputting anymore. Uh, and that allowed me to test the rest of the circuit, make everything was make sure everything was good. I've got my oscilloscope probe here set up. Another one here at the input I was you know initially sending a sine wave in and seeing if it seemed to start it. And it was actually coming out quite clean at the other end over here as well. So all of that was pretty decent at low volumes, but if I started pushing it up, it actually starts clipping pretty well in here. So I'm going to need to swap out also, I, I put all 12AX7s in the preamp stages, but the original schematic actually wanted the V1 to be a 12AU7, and the uh, I think it was the phase inverter to be a 12AU7 as well. So I'm going to be changing those back out to 12AU7s. We'll leave the secondary stage with the tone stack with 12AX7 to drive that a bit better. And then the uh, recovery stage of the reverb will be also, only using half of that will be a 12AX7 as well. But uh, I'm going to hopefully get a little bit better crunch and tone out of that. The crunchiness ends up being a bit not very pleasant sounding with the 12AX7 because I think we're applying too much magnification for the way this original circuit was designed. So I'm going back to the original circuit for that. All in all though, I've been pretty happy. We'll, uh, what I, you will end up hearing here, I'm, I'm not going to do that here, but I wanted to kind of wrap up a little bit. I will be getting a um, some audio clips of this working correctly once I've got the right tubes in it. Um, but as you can see here, this is I'll, I'll kind of briefly go over it again. This is the bias section here. Um, I'll just kind of use the chopstick here. Yum yum, yum yum. All right. So if you notice here, there's one thing I forgot to mention previously. I was kind of pointing around with my finger, but the smart, safe way to always be around an amp that you're not necessarily trying to do any work on is with a chopstick. Also, a chopstick's good for trying to kind of tap around at things and find out what's going on. The reason is that a wooden chopstick cannot conduct electricity and can't shock you. So it's a good, safe way to be touching things and seeing if you can figure out by touching a specific wire if noises start happening, etc., or moving wires around a little bit and seeing if things like hum disappear or reappear or get worse. But you should always be doing any kind of probing in an amp, either with a, a specified probe device that has the nice insulation on it or a, a chopstick. So make sure you do that for safety's sake. Yum, yum. Yum, yum. Um, I'll just kind of use the chopstick here. Bias section right here. It comes over and ties in down here. I've got right here are is my main power, uh, the main splitter from the two sides of the phase inverter, which is this circuit here. It splits off through here, and we take one half of it to these two, one half of it to these two, and then there's just a joined, you know, a bridged connection there. Half of the of the flow will roughly go through each of these, resi these 47K resistors. And then each one of those is going to a tube, uh, one of the power tubes here. Additionally, you can see the brown and the red wires here are connected to uh, the output of the tubes. Those then go down to the output transformer here. The return for the output transformer is coming up into here and heads out to the speaker. I've got the reverb connectors here. I will be trying to glue those down to this so that they're separated from each other and also stable. And that goes through a hole here. Uh, um, and over here we have our capacitors got a large watt resistor here uh, as was some of my troubleshooting found I was burning the resistor here it didn't say it on the on the uh, sheet usually the schematic will specify if they're not a standard you know these are like half watt resistors it, um, for some reason they just called this a uh, 18k resistor but once I realized and did the math one of the forum members pointed out to me and I also did the math so it made sense to me that this is uh, drawing about I think it was um, probably 18 to 20 watts of current, so we got a 25 watt resistor to handle that load. So sorry, actually that was about 12 watts if you do the math on it. And uh, the reason that 25 was chosen is that uh, the forum member that helped me with this mentioned that generally you want to over-engineer by double uh, in these situations. So if it's 12, it was about 24. Obviously the next uh, highest one would be 25. We don't want to go to a 20 watt because that's a little under that. We probably could have gotten by with it, but it's just safer to over-engineer. So 25 watts is what was chosen. I may be reviewing this and I might remove it because the schematic 
has it, but he had mentioned that it may not be needed. It's generally probably just going to lower the current to the subsequent stages. Once I have all four power tubes in and I'm playing around with it, I will try and reassess that at the time. So, pretty cool stuff. I'm pretty excited. It's turned out well. The only thing really now, I'm, a couple more things you'll have in the videos as we go, is we're gonna I'm going to remove this faceplate and remove some of these excess things that we don't need uh, and put uh, my own custom faceplate on it, kind of covering up the holes I didn't use, because all we really are going to have is volume, uh, bass, treble, and then uh, the reverb. Uh, I've debated and I haven't gone there yet, but I also can very easily add a... Right before here, I think it's I think it's here. If I remember right, I could pull in a uh, to another one that would be like a cut, the typical Fender cut of the, in the AC30. I could put that in as well. I, I'm not sure if it's either here or directly at the out, you know directly at the output of the phase inverter, or if it was somewhere else. But there's definitely a spot where I could put in that cut circuit. So, at any rate, <clears throat> I'm uh, pretty pleased this is working out quite well. I did learn one other trick. I had originally wired a resistor in here that was for half of this circuit to come into and then the other half of it would would come just straight into the power here this is the uh would be the d point in the in the uh, b plus rail or the ht rail but a, a forum member there also said well wait you don't need to do that you can actually just put that resistor directly in there so as you look you can see the resistor if you can see that i'll try and move this a little bit uh, right here you can see the resistors right on the preamp tube uh, socket so uh, i bring a little wire from there to here and then from here to here and then that is the only wire i need to bring into this power so uh, I'll, I'll re I'm not sure if you can see that very well here, but I'll be also trying to get some high uh, high quality pictures of this. Another qu quick interesting note was he had noticed that this uh, this section through here had had similar these very large scale grounding bus wires that I created for them, but they were getting danger close to this high positive uh, rail. So he told me to strip that off and just use a very thin gauge to finish that ground. So I did so and then tested that all out. Another suggestion he gave me as well is, I don't know if you remember, but these were more dangling off where they would, these 5 uh, watt 1K resistors that are going on the um, pin 4 were, which would be the um, the anode, were kind of dangling out to a wire and then moving down and down and then over to the B position right here. But the problem with that was that they could accidentally bump ground if something pushed them the wrong way. So he suggested that I tie them in between 4 and 6. 6 is not used on these tubes. So therefore I can run a wire, if I bring these resistors from four, 4 to 6 on each of them and then bring a wire just between the, each of these points and then over to B, uh, the, the B, the B position of the B plus or the HT power line, it allows them to be more solid. As you can see, they almost can't move them now. So it's much more stable for them and they can't accidentally be moved. So all in all, I'm pretty excited that this project worked out so well um, and I look forward to getting the final tubes in it and listening to it, and then I will do some uh, recordings of how that came out, and we'll clean it up. Uh, and then the very last video will likely be sh a showing of the final chassis. We're going to build a brand new chassis for, or not, sorry, this is the chassis, a brand new cabinet for it out of wood, because we got it without a cabinet as well. So we want to make a nice, high-quality wooden cabinet, and uh, we'll see how that goes. So at any rate, uh, hope hope you've enjoyed it so far. Thanks.